Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Today is actually my first Unreal Engine 5 tutorial I believe and what we're going to be going over is how to create an animation blueprint and blend space in Unreal Engine 5 for your own character. So in this I'm not going to be going over importing the character and the animations, however I do have a separate video which I did do that previously on. It was in Unreal Engine 4 but the process hasn't changed at all so you can use that one. Nothing else is different because the main part is outside of Unreal However, if you do want me to make an updated video for Unreal Engine 5, just let me know in the comments down below and I can definitely make that for you if you want. Without further ado, let me actually show you what we're going to go over and create today. You probably know what it is, it's basically we have our own custom character and we have animated it here. So what we've got is our riser animation, going into a walking animation, and a running animation as well as a jump too, and the jump can be moving and standing still like this. Now you might notice my character is controlling a little bit differently. The speeds are probably different to what you're used to as well as the jump height too. So I've just changed those to fit these animations better just to make it look a little bit nicer and more realistic as well. I just like to do that whenever I make a game and I can show you the settings I have as well so you can have it looking just like this too. And the character I'm using is the Erica Archer off of Mixmo.com which I'll leave a link to in the description down below and I'm just using some basic animations from there too. But that's enough talking so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we want to do first is we obviously want to create our animation blueprint so we can hold all of our animations for our character. So what the animation blueprint does is it just allows the character to choose which animations it needs to play based on certain specific values, which that's more of the state machine, but the animation blueprint holds all of it. So to do that, what we need to do first is obviously hold control and then press space to bring up our content browser here. And then we just need to find where we want to do it. So I've got a content folder, Inside that I've got Erica, which is the name of my character. Then I've got an animations folder in there with my animations here, and this is where I'm gonna create it. So I'm gonna right click, go to animation, get an animation blueprint, choose a skeleton you have. So again, for me, that's Erica Archer skeleton. Press okay. And then what I'm gonna do is name this to be Erica Anim BP, as that makes most sense for me. And I'm gonna open it up straight away. Now in here, you should be greeted with an output pose on the Anim graph. Again, this here decides which animation is going to be playing on our skeleton, so on our character. So to determine what animation we want to play, we want to use a state machine. So drag out of result and add a state machine. And I'm gonna click on it just to rename this to locomotion as that makes the most sense for me. I'm not sure why they have white text on a white background, it makes it difficult to see. For example, I didn't I spot that wrong, uh, but hopefully they change that in the new version. Uh, so let's open up our state machine here. Now I'm going to do a very basic state machine because all we need to do is have our idle, walk, run and jump. And we can do that in two different states. So I'm going to drag out of entry, add a state and I'm going to name this one idle slash walk slash run. Because we can have all three of those different animations in one state because we can have it inside of one animation blend space as that blends between different animations. So I'm going to drag out of this again, add another state and now I'm going to add a jump one. And from jump is gonna go back into the idle walk run as well. So it goes between the two. So we can go from idle walk or run into our jump and back from our jump into the idle walk run like this. We're gonna double click our jump state here and just drag in our jumping animation. So when we are inside of the jump state, it's going to be playing this jumping animation here. What I personally also want to do is untick loop animation here. Now you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but again, for my animations and my character, I personally think that one looks better, but you can obviously do whatever you want. What you can even do is maybe create a jump loop, which I do have a separate video on as well. But again, I can create an updated one for Unreal Engine 5 if you wanted to. We're gonna compile and save that and go back to our locomotion state. So now here, we don't have the animations for I Walk Run yet, and we don't have anything to go between the two states here. So if we double click the little arrows from I Walk Run to jump, you'll see we have result can enter transition. We want to enter this transition if we are jumping. So to be able to know when we're jumping, we can go to the event graph here and you should have event blueprint update animation and try get porn owner. If we drag out of try get porn owner, what we can do is we can get the movement component of the porn owner of the animation blueprint. So whichever pawn owns the animation blueprint is going to get their movement component. Out of the return value, we can get, or actually don't type get, but what we're gonna do is get is falling and this is going to tell the animation blueprint if the player is falling or not so we're going to be using this for jumping so this obviously also does the same thing if the player just walks off an edge this will play the same animation 
which you might want, you might not want. If you don't want that, then what you should probably do is see if the player press space and they're falling, then that obviously makes sense for you to do. I'm going to right click the return value, promote it to a variable and just name this jumping, or actually I'll name it is jumping, like so. And I'm going to connect that into the event blueprint update animation. So when the is falling is true, jumping is true, and when it's false, jumping is false. We also want the speed. So the speed is going to determine which animation we are in in the idle walk run through our blend space. So what we do is back in the event graph, come out of the get movement component, and we're going to get the velocity. Velocity is obviously the speed of the player. But you see that this is actually a vector, and we don't want it as a vector, we want it as a float. So we're going to drag out a velocity and just get the vector length like so this now turns it into a float because it returns the length of the vector obviously as it sounds in the name and we're going to right click that promote it to a variable naming this one speed and again just connect this in so it's going to be set like so because again you need to make sure that all of the white execution pins are connected otherwise it will not be fired off and then will not be set so we can compile and save that and that is now this part all set up for actually determining the values to be able to blend between our animations so we've got is jumping and speed. Obviously, as you grow your character and grow your animations, you'll have more code in here for more different things you need to determine. But with the basic thing we're doing today, this is good. So let's go back to our state machine and we're gonna click the arrow going from idle walk run to jump. So we click the double little transitional rule here. In here, what we're gonna do is just get is jumping, the boolean we just made, and we can connect it straight into the result there. Because what's gonna happen is if jumping is true, then we can enter the transition, and if it's false, then we can't. And obviously we only want to enter the transition going to jump if we are jumping. Let's go back to the state machine and go from jump to idle walk run. This one's gonna be slightly different. It's going to be get is jumping, but this time instead of just connecting it straight in, we're going to get a not Boolean. So if is jumping is not true, then we can enter the transition. And if it is true, then we can't enter the transition. So I hope that makes sense. So again, if we're not jumping, then we're not going to be able to jump animation. And if we are jumping, then this is obviously going to be false because true not is just the opposite of it, which means it's false, which means we can't enter it. So we're not jumping. So let's compile, save that, go back to the state machine. And now if we double click our state of idle walk run, you see we need to actually put our animations in here. So again, what we have is we have our idle, we have our walk and we have our run animations. However, we can't just put these all in here at the same time. What we could do is we could use a blend poses by int or anything along those lines. However, obviously we don't want that. We can use a blend space, which is a lot more efficient. So let's minimize this. Control tab to open our content browser. And back in my animations folder, this is where I'm gonna create it. I'm going to right click, go to animation and create an anim blend space or just blend space, sorry, 1D. Now you can make just a blend space but that is if you're using directional movement. So if you're gonna be going forwards, backwards, left, right, diagonal, stuff like that. I don't want that. For the moment, I just want 1D. So this is gonna be forwards and backwards. So I'm gonna create a blend space 1D on my Erica Archer skeleton. And I'm gonna name this Erica BS for blend space, not anything else. And we'll open that up. Now in here, this might look a bit complicated to start with, but it is very simple. So this little rectangle at the bottom here, this is actually the graph determining what the speed is and what animation it should play. So if you hold down left shift and move your mouse, you'll see we're moving this kind of green cursor here, and that's just gonna be previewing the animation. So on the horizontal axis on the axis settings here, I'm gonna change the speed. I'm gonna change the name, sorry, to be speed. The minimum value I'm going to leave as zero. The maximum I'm going to put as 600 as that is the maximum walking or movement speed for my player. Again, I'll show you in a minute how to set that part up but just the, the maximum speed you want them to go, put as that. Number of divisions, you can keep as four, or you can change it to three, but I'm gonna keep it as four, and we don't really need to change anything else. Then we're gonna drag in our animations. So all the way on the left, when the speed is zero, they're not moving, so I want to play the idle animation, as you can see here. In the middle, when the speed is 300, I want the player to be walking, and on the right, when the speed is 600, I want the player to be running. So again, if I hold left shift, we can preview this, so on the left, they're idle. As we increase our speed, they're gonna start walking. And as we increase our speed further, they're then gonna start running, as you can see here. Now obviously, as you go in between them like this, you get that kind of look there, but that's fine for me because my speed isn't going to be 150 
or 450. It's just going to be either 0, 300 or 600 based on the way I've coded my character. And yours should be the same as well. If we scroll down the left, what we're going to find is the sample interpolation and we have the global interpolation here. This is kind of the smoothness between blending from these different animations. I'm going to set this to be 10. Anywhere really between 5 and 15 is a good value, so 10 right in the middle is good for me. Obviously, mess about with it to get it perfect for you because it will look different for different animations. So this is kind of just trial and error, what looks the best. And again, this blends between the animations so it's not just a dead on straight and sharp transition from idle straight to running because that doesn't look too good. You want it to be nice and smooth. So let's save and close the blend space and we can now just drag in this blend space into our output animation pose inside of our idle walk run state here. Now the speed we kept, we created this earlier, we're just gonna input our speed float, which we made like so. And again, this speed of the player is now going to determine which animation we're playing based upon the horizontal axis value we just made. If we compile, save, close this, this should have been now all completely done. However, you'll notice my character is still under T pose, so let me show you how to fix that. Control tab to open the content browser, and let's now find our actual character. So for me, that's gonna be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. What I'm also gonna do is just move this into my Erica folder, like so. And I'm also gonna rename it, so select it, F2, and I'm gonna name it Erica BP. Open that up, like so. Now in here, if we go to the viewport, you see I have my character here. Yours might not be this, yours might actually still be the default mannequin like this. If it is, just select the mesh, then select skeletal mesh, change it to your mesh that you want. So for me, that's the Erica Archer. Then under animation, we have animation mode, use animation blueprint, and the anim class wants to be our Erica anim BP, which we created earlier. So we'll compile, save that, you'll see it's now doing the idle animation as it's not moving. So that is perfect. If we go to our event graph, what we can do is you see this is my basic sprinting code. So when I press left shift, it's going to go up to 600. When I release it, it'll go to 300. I do have more in-depth videos on creating sprinting and stamina and all that good stuff if you want. And let me also show you my default values. So my default value for the max walk speed is 300. So that by default, the player is walking at a speed of 300. My jump velocity, I've also put as 300, or a jump Z velocity, sorry, is 300, and that has just lowered the height of my jump. So those are the values which I've got, which I think look a bit better, more realistic, and they definitely work better with these specific animations I've got as well. But if we close this, we can hit play and test this out, and you should see this is working perfectly. So we've got our idle animation here looking like this. We can walk, and we can sprint, and it all looks good like this. Sorry if it looks a bit laggy. This version of Emerald 5 is still not very well optimized and obviously my PC isn't amazing, but it still works. So again, we've got idle, we've got walk, and we've got run, and they're nicely blending between each other as well. And let me also show you jump. So jump from standing and jump from running like this. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up, so we've animated our own character now. So we've got a custom character in the game. We've got it animated with an idle, a walk, and a run as well as a jump which works in both movement and standing still too. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.